everyone today? Good? Oh my goodness, thank you for coming. I am so excited to be here. Huge thanks to everyone tuning in on the live stream right now. So today, I'm really excited to talk to you guys about the D850 and a little bit of fashion photography and how to apply fashion to your work. You know, for me, photography has been a lifelong love affair. It has definitely been an addiction of mine since I was 12 years old. Um, I have literally been doing this 10 years now. Time has just flown. I don't even know where the time has gone. And for me, photography is truly the outward expression of inner significance. It's about expressing your soul and your imagery. And that's what I really love to bring to life in my images. You know, it's interesting, this whole journey of photography. Um, I actually, my first big break in the industry was shooting for a TV show on HDNet. Um, it was a docu-reality travel show where basically I went to um, different islands all over the world, like Ibiza, Spain, and Miami, Puerto Rico, all over the place shooting swimsuit models for a living. And I did that for four years, and that was like my first big break out of college. And that's when I truly kind of discovered my style as a photographer. So it's interesting the journey that you end up experiencing throughout this, this whole adventure. I never would have thought that I would have been shooting swimsuit models for a living, but I definitely loved it, and that's when I really discovered that style. So lately I've been doing a lot of different kinds of work, and this is just to kind of give you guys a background on where I come from so you can see the kind of work I'm doing now. Lately I've been doing a lot of different kinds of magazine work as well as a lot of commercial work. This is for a menswear brand called Pockets Menswear. They make all kinds of great suits. Um, this is for Floorsheim Shoes, a shoe company. You know, we do a lot of catalog work as well. And uh, also I shoot a lot of fashion work. I do a lot of stuff for different designers and brat brands and ad agencies. Um, so it's kind of everything commercial and brand related, that's what I shoot. It's everything that's pushing a product. So this is for a hair company. It's interesting shooting hair. You really have to capture that beautiful hair texture. Um, so really it's all about bringing the brand's vision to life in my images. This was for a jewelry company. Jewelry is really challenging. Have you guys ever shot jewelry, any of you? It's really challenging because you really have to focus on getting both the jewelry and the model in focus. So usually I like to shoot at like f2.8, f3.5, but with jewelry I end up shooting at like f8, f11 in order to get, to get everything tack sharp for the client. This is another jewelry company for James Avery, real more lifestyle type of brand. Um, even companies like Virgin Pulse, I'm shooting a lot of lifestyle uh, kind of types of photography. This was an interesting campaign because you know, you had to get lens flare in every single shot. So I ended up putting Vaseline at the bottom of my filter and shining a light on it in order to get that lens flare to make that happen. <laughs> it's like an old film trick. I see you laughing over there. Yeah, have you heard of this trick? Right? It's so funny. My dad actually told me about it. And I'm like, that's a really good idea. But definitely only put it on your filter. Don't use it on the lens. <laughs> that's a bad idea. Never put it directly on your lens. You will never, you, know, you just can't go back from there. <laughs> so that was definitely an adventure. Then I also do a lot of different kinds of lifestyle photography. So how many guys are portrait photographers? Awesome. Good. Good, good. What about weddings? Any of you? Okay, none of you. Wow, right on. I realized that I was not a wedding photographer when I missed the kiss at three weddings in a row. <laughs> I realized that was not my forte, and so I have avoided weddings ever since. But I shot them all through college. Um, so yeah, that's, you kind of figure out what you're good at and what you're not so good at in this industry. So lots of lifestyle photography. This dog's name is Dixie Bell, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I love doing props and using fun props for, the, for different shoots and things. And uh, you know, it's interesting when you see your images come to life really huge. This is on the side of a building. And this is what I'm so excited about the D850 is the reason that you know a lot of clients used to ask me to shoot medium format just because they thought that that was needed for different billboards and things like that. The D850 eliminates that because it's so crazy high megapixel. It's got 46.7, 45.7 megapixels. And so it's just the detail in this camera is just insane. And lately I've been doing a lot of video work. How many of you guys do video work? Maybe? Yay, good, love that. Everything is going towards video. It's so incredibly important. So the past few years I've been moving from stills to video and it's an interesting experience because you know, you're not dealing with just a still image, you're dealing with music and movement and so many frames per second. So you know, I really kind of broke into it and I've directed a couple of TV commercials and I really enjoyed the whole video aspect of things. This is just a kind of a quick shot of my gear bag. I am one of those photographers that only shoots prime lenses. How many of you guys shoot primes? Maybe you? 
Yes, they're just so beautiful and they create this perfectly sharp image with nice bokeh in the background. So some of my favorite lenses are the 35 millimeter, the 50, the 85, and the 105, all Nikkor lenses. So I like to be my own walking zoom. So if I need to take a close up image, I'll walk forward. Or if I need to take a wider angle shot, I'll walk backwards. Um, I feel like that makes me more creative than just using a zoom. Um, so it's just kind of the way that I shoot. Everything's really controlled. So I would love to talk with you guys a little more about the D850. And I call this camera the camera of totality. Um, the reason is, is I feel like I'm shooting in beast mode with this camera. Have you guys, have you, any of you shot this camera yet, the D850? No? Oh my gosh, well you guys are in for a treat. Um, it's interesting to me, um, I was able to work with the camera before it was released for a couple of days. It was really hard for me to send it back. <laughs> I was like, guys, can I just buy it now? I just really want to keep it. Um, so it was just one of those things. It was really hard for me to FedEx back to Nikon before the shoot. So it was interesting getting to be one of the first photographers to shoot with this camera. It was a prototype. And basically, they gave me full creative freedom to create these images. They just wanted to showcase what this camera was capable of. So of course, I wanted to set up an amazing fashion shoot. Um, I ended up casting a model that I've worked with before from Wallflower Agency. Her name's Becca. And she just has a beautiful mood in her picture. She's real soulful. And I just really loved her personality. And then we were able to get a really great dream team together. Do any of you guys work with the team when you're working? Of course, the producer. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's really important to have a great team around you. So we ended up shooting at this interesting location. It's actually a wedding venue in Texas, and it's called the White Sparrow Barn. And I'd shot there before. Um, so for this particular shoot, I thought, how cool would it be to shoot high fashion here? Normally weddings are shot there. And just bring this to life. And you can see how you get that vastness of this shot. Usually I don't shoot fashion from a low angle, but for this particular image, it worked out really well. And uh, you can also see how the detail comes to life in these. And Becca really owned it. This was a shot that I always wanted to do. My favorite color is yellow. And I wanted to do this beautiful image with a 50-foot train. So that our stylist brought this huge dress with this long, long train. So to get the movement, we had a, um, our stylist, Doug. He was actually underneath and just throwing the gown up and down in the air to get that sort of movement on the dress. He got a workout. He was like sweating by the end of it. <laughs> yes. Well, he's like underneath it, like putting it up and down like a parachute he's in the here. back. He's oh, down. He's yeah. He's, a, he's on the bottom floor and there's a second floor. And then I'm kind of like shooting from above. And a fan so, work? You know, it was too heavy to use a fan. Yeah, it was crazy because it was 50 feet of fabric. <laughs> yeah, and, and it kind of had a reflective. Yes, exactly. It kind of has that satin fabric feel. So it ended up working out really well. And this was one of the images that they used throughout the campaign. So I just love the color yellow, kind of serendipitous since Nikon's colors are yellow, obviously. And then this is shot from a different angle. So when I'm shooting fashion, I like to not only get one angle, I like to try different angles of the same setup because you never know what you're going to end up liking best. So this is shot from the lower floor, so you can see how the, the gown sort of billows in the air and kind of adds movement to the image. And then the camera also does eight frames per second, which to me is like unheard of when you're working with 45.7 megapixels. So it allows you, if you shoot sports or high action or lifestyle, to really capture those split action moments that come up in between. Like this one I had shot eight frames per second in order to get the sort of movement of her swinging in the swing. And you can get the gown here. Does anyone know how the gown kind of has that flow? Does anyone know how to capture those looks? Any of you? Throws it up and yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. And you'll see in the video in just a second. There's no wires. Yes, there's uh, there's no wires. And well, I actually do think we tried wires, but we ended up liking the shots better where my assistant will grab the bottom of the gown, throw it up in the air, and run. <laughs> <laughs> so that's exactly how that happens. But it's really how it works with fashion photography. It's all these little tips and tricks like that that really make for an impactful shot. So, uh, and then we backlit this with a strobe because it was very overcast on this day. I tend to shoot pretty natural. Like if I'm, if the situation's beautiful, I'm not gonna overly complicate it with lighting. But this one, I wanted a little bit of a kiss of a hair light in the background. So we had a strobe back there. And uh, this one's interesting because just the long lens, do you see how that long lens just blurs your background beautifully? It makes your, your subject come to life. This is using the 200 millimeter F2. 
So I got way far back from my subject. And then she's, this is just sort of a natural moment. She was kind of in the moment. And then she happened to look back at the camera and capture that fleeting moment here with that 200 millimeter lens and just blurs the background beautifully. So it works out really well. And then you always have to have a dog, you know? <laughs> How many of you guys like shooting pet, pets and dogs and things like that? That's awesome. Yes, yeah, so I've always, I bought this gown probably five years ago and I've never gotten to use it in a shoot. And I thought, what a perfect situation and scenario to use this gown. So I ended up getting a Great Dane and I had to find the Great Dane. So I posted it out on Facebook. I said, who has a spotted Great Dane that I can use for a photo shoot? And believe it or not, uh, I got a few feedback and finally someone came up with a really amazing spotted Great Dane. His name's Fisher. And so he got to be in the shoot. So it's interesting these, how these shoots come to life. A lot of people think that I just show up and shoot, but literally, <laughs> I wish that was the case, but literally there's two weeks of pre-production that goes into this kind of stuff. You know, finding the right talent, the right models, the right makeup artists, all this team of people together in order to create what we're looking for. Because the biggest challenge was creating all these shots in one day. Because these shots are big setups. So it's an interesting process. So you can see how you can crop in. That's what, another thing that I love about this camera is that you're able to have a lot of leeway in your cropping. So you can crop in tight to get the details and just see how that comes to life. I love shooting beauty. How many of you guys shoot beauty photography? Yay, that's one of my faves. Oh, it's so beautiful. Um, so you can see just the detail that comes to life in the beauty images. And uh, this was at the very end of the day. They were almost kicking us out of the location. So I had to get this in like five minutes and I still wanted to keep shooting because the sun wasn't down yet, but we had to be out of the location by 6 p.m. So that's always a struggle, right? As a photographer, I'm always like cramming in as many shots as possible before the end of the day. So you can see like this image was shot pretty wide. Right? And the leeway that this camera gives you in order to crop in, if I wanted a really tight shot like this, there's so much detail there. So it really gives you, pore. right? You see every pore. pore. <laughs> you have to do so much more retouching. <laughs> well, there's that. There's going to be some retouching involved there for sure, for sure. But it does give you like, for, especially when you're shooting magazines and advertising, people always change their mind after, after the fact of what they want to use them for and the different cropping. So it just gives you a lot of flexibility in the cropping there, which is really nice. So always works well. But yes, there will be retouching. And I found that... You know, the biggest problem with this camera <laughs> is the, the fact that it will make you want to reshoot your whole portfolio <laughs> with this camera, <laughs> to be quite honest. I'm like, I look back at some of my older images that don't look as detailed and as sharp and vibrant, and I'm like, God, I wish I had had the D850 when I had shot that image because it just comes to life even more. So one of the other interesting aspects that I loved working with this camera is changing the format. This camera allows you to shoot in different formats other than just your normal rectangle. Um, so I shot in square format a lot. Um, these are still rectangle, but I actually shot these. You can shoot them in camera. You go to um, image size and then go to square and it will literally shade out the edges. So you can shoot some nice fine art portraits in the square mode. So it's really fun to work with when you're a portrait photographer because it kind of just gives it that fine art, beautiful feel. And then these are actually shot with in-camera black and whites. So not a lot of editing was done on these, just really simple black and whites. Um, so I really, really enjoyed. This is one of my favorite formats to shoot. It just looks, I don't know, something about the square format just gives it the composition. It makes it stronger, I feel like. Um, so I really enjoyed working with that. There's other formats you can use. Um, they have the DX format you can use within the camera and then four by five as well. Um, so there's a lot of different formats you can use. And the new in-camera black and whites on these D850s are just, it, just really beautiful, really pristine and gorgeous. So do any of you guys ever shoot square format? Like from, oh, nice, right? And it's great for social media. You just crop it, yeah. <laughs> There's something about shooting it in camera that I just love, you know? But yeah, you can definitely crop it. Um, yeah, the in camera black and whites. So let's get in a little bit. I'm going to still continue to talk about the D850, but I also wanted to talk to you guys more about the secrets of a fashion photographer, what goes into fashion photography, and how you can apply that to your video work, your portrait work, and how to really create authentic images. Because that's really the name of the game in photography is authenticity. That's the main thing. How do you craft images and build images to create authenticity? So how do you guys create authenticity in your work? Do you have certain tools and tips that you guys use on every single shoot, any of you? 
<laughs> like no hands go up. <laughs> well, it's an interesting thing to talk about because your style is not something that you have to force as a photographer. Your style is something that evolves naturally the more and more you shoot. So the more you shoot, the more your things that you're going to see come up over and over again in your work. So it's not something that you have to force. Um, it really goes into the small details that you, small decisions that you make during the shoot and before the shoot. And it's really all about planning and planning those details. So I do a ton of pre-production before every single production that I do in order to capture what we're looking for and create authentic images. I'm always using certain props. I'm always bringing hats on set because that's a part of my personality. It really depends on your personality in order to create authentic work. So ultimately, the better that you get to know yourself as a person, the more you're going to be able to express that personality in your images. So really and truly, photography is all about self-exploration. You know, what is it about you that makes you unique? All of you guys are unique. That's the beauty of photography. All of you guys can shoot a person, the same scenario, same lighting, and all the images are going to look completely different. And that's what I love about oh, photography. Amazing. Isn't it amazing? I love that. It's crazy how that happens. But it's so true, though. It's like everyone has a different point of view, a different frame of reference, a different growing up. Um, that's all going to shape the way that you personally see the world. So the more that you can get to know yourself, the more you can express the way that you personally see the world. And that's what's really neat. And then other things that really help to establish authenticity are pre-planning. I do so much pre-production before every shoot. Have you guys ever heard of a vision board? Any of you? Yes. Awesome. So I do one of these before every single production that I do. I also do these for life goals. Um, I do a cork board um, once a year for the different goals that I have for the year, and I put them up visually. But for every single shoot I do, this helps everyone get on the same page, basically. So it's a very visual industry. You know, it's one thing to say to a makeup artist, hey, I want natural makeup. You know, until she actually sees what kind of natural makeup you're looking for, it's really hard to just communicate with words. And I've got to say, I am way better at communicating with pictures than I am with, with words. So it's just easier. It's a visual industry and everyone can be on the same page. So for instance, the top row were some inspiration images for the lighting that I was going for. The middle row is the sort of makeup that I was looking for for this particular shot. And then the bottom row was the hair that I was going for. Can I so, how you make yeah. Oh, absolutely. Can you put these together for your shoots? Yeah, so actually, it's funny, I did this digitally for the presentation, but I actually print them out and I put them on a cork board. Okay. So it's like old school Pinterest, <laughs> essentially. Do you guys use Pinterest at all? Yep. Um, so I re literally put them on a cork board, but I just threw this together in Photoshop. Yeah, so it works really well, but you can, Pinterest is great. images that you have to put this together? What did you say? just use your images to put them together? Yeah, I use my images and just Google image search if I'm looking for certain poses. Um, so I'm not looking to copy anyone else's images. I'm just looking to take bits and pieces to really communicate you know, with my team like certain little aspects in order to create a unique image. Um, yeah, so very good question. Yeah, inspiration. It's a, it, some people call it a mood board. Some call it a vision board. It's really just inspiration for the shoot. Um, so, and you can see how it kind of comes to life in the images. Like this looks totally different than all those images, um, but it has my feel and it has my style as a part of it. This is actually shot through a window. Um, but yeah, it kind of comes to life and I just, I love doing those vision boards because it really helps the whole team out get on the same page for the shoot. So let's talk a little bit about lens selection. Because it took me a while to learn this. When I was shooting for that TV show, I was shooting everything with the 50 millimeter, because that's the only kind of gear that I really had. But then I found, um, my dad passed down to me a 180 millimeter lens, a longer lens. And I started shooting with that. And I started noticing a huge difference in the, you know, the look of the images. Suddenly they came to life. And it was the, all the difference was that long lens. So if you want to look at this comparison, it's really interesting. The 35 millimeter, do you notice how it, it's, does, it's kind of lifeless and her features are a little bit distorted? It's not as powerful of an image because her forehead looks a little bigger. I mean, she's a beautiful girl. You couldn't take a bad picture of her, to be quite honest. But you can see that it's not quite as powerful of an image. And suddenly you move to the 85, and then she really kind of starts coming to life. I would say that the 85 is the minimum focal length lens that I would use for a shoot for a headshot. Um, and this is, just, this is just headshots, by the way. Definitely keep that in mind. For full length, I may use the 50, but for the 
headshot type of look, the longer lens is definitely better. So then all of a sudden you get to 180 and it's like, bam, her headshot comes to life. That compression effect looks really beautiful. And all of a sudden you have a really iconic headshot. So do you guys have the 7200? Awesome. So next time you're shooting a headshot or filming a headshot, try zooming it all the way into 200 millimeters, backing up and then taking your image. And you're going to get a lot more amazing results just because of the compression. It's going to blur your background really nicely. Um, it's going to make your model look even better. And you can see how here how it blurs the background. You see that beautiful bokeh in the background? So that's what that longer focal length will do for you in your headshots. The settings? Well, it can be. Sometimes I shoot wide open um, setting wise. This one I believe I shot at f2.8 um, to get that real creamy background. Yeah, you can also call it a creamy background. Bokeh-licious, <laughs> no, creamy. Bokeh sounds yeah, <laughs> bokeh sounds better. <laughs> that's awesome. So yeah, f2.8, I'm usually at the lowest ISO possible, usually um, 100, um, unless I'm in a low light situation. And then shutter speed, I usually keep it at 1 500th of a second. The reason is I'm a, I'm a little dancer while I shoot. I move a lot. And that's just so I make sure to get tack sharp images with no image blur, unless I'm doing image blur on purpose, which usually I'm not. So yeah, those are usually the basic settings for portraits, shooting at 2.8 on a 1 4 lens. Do you shoot uh -huh. mainly um, handheld or with a tripod? I, I do both. That's a very good question. Um, usually. I, if I'm in plenty of light, I'll shoot handheld. So um, that's why I like shooting at 1 500th of a second to make sure if I move or something like that. Um, but I do use tripods sometimes when I'm trying to, I feel like tripods kind of slow you down, which, which can be good. Um, so sometimes I'll use tripods when it's low light or I'm trying to get like a motion shot of someone walking, like a panning shot. Um, and obviously for video, tripods as well. Do you Love focus those. in different poses or do you stay in the center? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. He asked, do I focus and recompose? Um, the way that I like to shoot, that I tend to get the sharpest image, is I will compose my image first. And like the D850 has 51 auto points, um, focus points. So I will compose the image first and then move my focus point exactly to where the eyes are. And then I take the shot. So I use single point autofocus. Yeah. And then in fashion, that tends to be how I got, get the sharpest image. So you see every eyelash and everything. So I think it, it's helped. When I find that I used to, to um, compose after and then focus, I found that it was a little, a little bit off. So when I compose first and then move that focus point to the eyes, I just find that it's a lot sharper. But everyone's different. You know, a lot of people can do the recompose and it can still be sharp. I just found that for me that works, works best. Yeah, and this is a portrait actually shot with a wide angle lens, which I rarely use. Uh, the 24 millimeter. Do you see how his hand is like distorted in the frame? It's kind of an interesting cinematic look. So there's always ways to break the rules. I don't always use a long lens, um, depending on what I'm shooting. I wanted to get the whole, you know, his whole arm in there and his whole hand in there. So there's always ways to break the rules in photography. But I do love those long lenses for headshots. So this is a interesting time. I love time lapse. So much fun. And the new time lapse on the D850 is incredible. I don't know if you guys have seen what Lucas Gilman has done with the time lapse feature. It is just, it's 4K and it is incredibly beautiful. Um, this one is just a shot of uh, my dream team. I call them the dream team. And basically this is what goes into big productions. Um, it's really important to surround yourself with people that inspire you creatively, especially in business. Um, the more that you're around people that are successful and that are passionate about their craft, the more successful that you are going to be as a photographer and a person in general. So my dream team consists of my producer, Nancy. I call him Nan Nancy Bear. She's awesome. And then Eric is my digital tech and lighting assistant. So he helps with all of the lighting and we plan together what the lighting is going to be for the shoot. And then we always have a wardrobe stylist, a hair and makeup artist, sometimes hair and makeup assistants. That's my assistant, Nico. He's uh, awesome. <laughs> he had to get in there. But it's really kind of a big production, so you can see how it comes to life. Um, and then also, you know, we'll have assistance for a lot of people sometimes, depending on how big the production is. We might have two wardrobe stylists. I um, mean, the producer basically um, gets together the whole shoot, you know, getting location releases, um, getting the meals set up for the day of the shoot, um, hiring the talent and working with the models and handling the castings. And basically, I'm a part of every single aspect of this. 
So like she'll send me the casting list and then we'll kind of help pick the models of whoever we're going to be shooting with. And then the client will have a say so as well. So it's a lot of production that goes into each of these you know, different shoots. But it's really fun. And keep in mind that I only started with me and the model that I was shooting. So I've grown my team as I've grown my business. Do you, have you guys ever heard of Model Mayhem? Any of you? Yeah. So that's actually, I don't know if it's still big now, but when I was starting out, that was how you built your team. So I would end up you know, working with people for free and working with local modeling agencies. I would call up the agency and say, hey, do you guys have any new faces that need images? And then the agency would send me them to shoot for free. And then that's how I really built my fashion portfolio. And agencies will still do that now. They'll send you their new talent that they need images of. You just have to really make a meeting with them. So it's a really great way to build your portfolio, even if you're just shooting portraits. Um, it's nice to add some models in the mix to really showcase what you can do. So casting is a big part of what I do. And it's so important to cast the right talent for the right part. Every brand has a different look and a different vision that they're going for. Um, this was an interesting shoot. Have you guys ever heard of Poopery? <laughs> have you? <laughs> you have? Yeah. That's a hilarious That's brand. Really yes, they're doing great. They're actually based in Dallas. And uh, so I got to do this production, and it was so funny because this model, Kirsten, she is big time. She was doing really well in the agent in the uh, modeling world, and she came into the casting, and she told the casting agent, "You know what, guys." I want to be the next Pooh girl. <laughs> so literally that's what she said. I was cracking up. So she walked in and the client literally like booked her on the spot. Like she was going to be the talent because of her enthusiasm really. So a lot of what goes into casting is not just their look. It's really about their personality and what they bring to the images. That's a really big part of it, especially for lifestyle type of photography. With fashion photography, um, you know, sometimes it's really all about their body type. <laughs> What'd you say? Great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's really interesting. This shoot was so funny because they wanted the, the toilet right next to the bathtub. So we had to scout. Our location scouting consisted of us uh, scouting bathrooms. <laughs> so I've never had to do that before. So and that's, uh, staged. It's actually, bathroom. this is actually a house that we shot at. Um, oh, and then, but we did have to build that wall. And then we had to bring that toilet in there because they wanted it right next to the bathtub. And in most houses, that's not the case. Yeah. Right. So there's always some tricky, you know, things to work around um, in that aspect. So it was kind of a really funny shoot. But Kirsten rocked it. She was just full of personality. So and then this production was interesting. This was for the Nikon D5500 campaign, which was a small, the first touchscreen camera. Um, the D850 is now touchscreen, which I'm super excited about. Have you guys worked with the touchscreen on these DSLRs? It's incredibly user-friendly. I don't know if you guys are used to working with your phones, but just to scroll through images and be able to zoom in and zoom out of images is really, really helpful, especially when you want to show people on set, like, oh, look at the hair and makeup and how it comes to life. So casting-wise, they didn't want models. They wanted real people talent for this shoot. So we ended up going to the local colleges in Denver on our scouting trip, and I cast four amazing college students for this whole production. And uh, it's funny, I do this thing when they come into casting, is I usually will give them a big hug. And if they give me one of those awkward side hugs, I know they're gonna be really hard to work with. <laughs> but if they give me a big hug on during casting and they're all excited, I know that those are you know, the kind of people that are gonna bring the energy on set. So those are the people that I usually will hire because they have that enthusiasm and they're ready to go. And you can see their personality come to life. You know, they're super into it. A lot of people, most people, it takes them a while to get out of their shell. I am one of those people. I hate being photographed. How many of you guys actually like being photographed? Any of you? Nice. That's awesome. I hate being photographed. But I mean, it's just such an intimidating experience. Maybe it's because I'm a photographer and I'm like looking at the lighting and then all this stuff. But it's, uh, it's funny how that works. And then we had to find, actually, it's pretty funny. The casting for this actually consisted of us going to a skate park and scouting um, skateboarders. We tried to find who the best skateboarder was. We walked up to him and said, hey, do you want to be a part of an icon shoot next week? And he was like, yeah, sure, that sounds great. So sometimes you have to really go rogue and uh, find your talent that way when you're not able to cast through modeling agencies. So let's talk a little bit about connection. I know you guys, a lot of you shoot portraits. So are there ways that you like to establish a quick connection with whoever it is you shoot? Any of you have any, any tidbits that y'all like to use? I'll tell you what I like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always ask the person, what, what was the last thing that made them laugh? 
Oh, I love that. What is the last thing that made them laugh? I like that. I might have to start using that. <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm an, I mean, I, the way that I establish a connection is kind of interesting. Um, I do a lot of research on every single person that I shoot. And now it makes it very easy these days with Facebook and Instagram to really kind of get to know who people are before you see them. Because um, sometimes they're flying in for a shoot, you might not get to meet with them beforehand. So I do a lot of research. I will Google them, Facebook them, talk with them on the phone. Um, these ways help me get to know a sense of who they are because photography is all about relationships. So the more that you can establish that connection, the more you're going to be able to bring that out during the actual shoot. So for instance, one of the biggest things that I research is what's their favorite music? You never want to have empty, like, just complete silence on a shoot. Have you guys ever been to a silent shoot? Especially a photo shoot, it's brutal. I don't know what it is, but like I'm a real big energy person and if it's just dead silence, I have trouble shooting. Um, so I always have their favorite music playing when they walk in the door and this immediately sets them at ease. They're like, oh wow, you like this kind of music too? I'm like, yeah, it's awesome. And we just have like an instant connection. How do you research that? <laughs> How do I research that? A lot of people put what kind of music they like on their Facebook pages. I mean, I do. Yeah, I mean, a lot that I found, or I'll just ask them. I said, what kind of music do you like to listen to? And then they'll kind of give me a little bit of feedback. A lot of people will say, I don't care. You know, I have to like get it out of them. Um, but that really, really sets the tone for the image and for the shoot, and it kind of sets them at ease. And then always have food on set. Do you guys get hangry when you're hungry? <laughs> I get super hungry and hangry. Uh, so I always have food on set, always beverages. It's really important. And uh, it just really sets the tone. I like to ask them questions when they arrive about you know, what they're into, what sports they're into. And really, it's more of a conversation and a dance when I'm shooting them. It's a getting to know period. So for instance, when they're sitting in hair and makeup, I might just sit next to them and talk with them before the shoot just to really get to know them and realize that I am really excited to shoot them because being photographed is a really kind of intimidating experience, in my opinion. And so you really have to be uh, respectful of that you know, when you go into a photo shoot. So I like to really get to know the soul of the person and that's what I focus on. Um, because it's just an intimidating process, I think, being photographed. Because you know what, when people walk in the door, all they're thinking about are their flaws. Do you know what I mean? And so if you can turn that around, if you can compliment them when they walk in the door, shower them with compliments, you're building their confidence and that's gonna end up showing up in the images. So I do a thing when I'm shooting is I shoot through moments as opposed to just stopping and shooting like every you know, five minutes. I might burn some digital files to get the image that I'm looking for, um, but I know when I've got the shot. So I always, it's interesting, when the model hears that click of what I'm shooting, they feel like they're doing a good job. I'm like building their confidence as I shoot. So I burn those digital files in order to get the one image where they're connecting, where they look, don't look posed, where they look completely effortless. And that's why a lot of my images don't really look posed. They look very effortless because I'm shooting through those moments. So try that when you're shooting. Like it's okay to burn some digital files. That's really the, beautiful, the beauty of digital, um, essentially. When, we were, when I was shooting film, it was a lot harder to do that because I would burn so much film and it was, got very expensive very quickly. Um, so I'm not a shoot and burn kind of photographer. I like to shoot through those moments in order to get those select moments where they're really connecting. So it's very important. How many of you guys like to scout locations? Yes, it's so funny. That's always the most fun part sometimes to me of the pre-production is scouting the location because you don't have the pressure of the shoot day when you scout. Like for instance, that shoot in Colorado, we got to take a scouting trip to Colorado before the actual shoot. So we got to do the fun stuff and have nice dinner and, and get to look at the location. So the location is a really big aspect of the photo shoot. How many of you guys um, you know, scout the location at the time of day that you're gonna be shooting? Any of you? Awesome. It's really important. You don't always have that luxury. And when you don't have that luxury, I always use an app called the Sunseeker app. You guys heard of Sunseeker? It's a really amazing photo shoot app. And what it does is it tells you at what time of day the sun will be where. So you're able to really plan out your day and see where the sun is going to be whenever you're shooting. So you can really align your shot list in order to where the best light is. So I use that Sunseeker app a lot in my work. It's very, very helpful. Um, so we do that every time we scout locations. Um, this was for a menswear brand, and it's kind of a more hip, fun kind of menswear brand. It's not, you know, stuffy. 
um, they call it like Frank Sinatra with tattoos. So good, uh, I like good analogies. So you know, I saw this airstream, and it's like a barber shop that um, this guy has turned into a an airstream. And so we ended up shooting it there. So it was a really fun shoot. It made for a different location than you would normally see menswear. So I always like looking for different cool locations. And then we also shot at the bowling alley, just stuff that you wouldn't normally see menswear brands shot at. So I kind of like that ju juxtaposition. Then this was shot in the stockyards. This was for a client. Um, it's kind of like the REI of India. And it was sort of a fun sports brand. It's called Woodland Worldwide. They actually flew in from India to shoot in Texas, of all places. So we shot in the stockyards because they wanted that sort of western kind of rugged theme. And we also shot on a ranch in Texas. So Texas does have some good locations. Um, not anything like Colorado or you know Europe or anything. But we do have some good fields. We have some horses. <laughs> and we have the stockyards as well. So let's talk a little bit about props. Do you guys use props in your work? Any of you? A little bit? Here and there? I'm a big prop person. <laughs> I love adding props to my images. Um, this was a, obviously a very big prop we used for this particular mm -hmm. shot. Um, one of my makeup artist friends had an airplane sitting in his backyard, believe it or not. Just a huge, I mean, he had a, a lot of land, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> it wasn't like in suburbia or anything. It's out on a ranch, but he had this cool, I think it's an old American Airlines like airplane. So we ended up doing this whole beautiful shoot around that kind of Amelia Earhart style. So it adds production value, which is really great. You know, props can really add that. I'm always bringing like accessories to shoots. Like these are goggles that I had brought for this particular shot. And it's just amazing how you can see such detail in the images. So I'm always bringing hats. As you guys know, I'm a big hat girl. Always bring hats on set. Um, even sometimes instruments. I grew up a band nerd. Um, I played saxophone. <laughs> so I'm always bringing random props like this because it just adds personality to the images. You know, a lot of people are anti-prop. They like to keep it really simple, which is their style. It just really all depends on your personality. And I just personally love adding props and things like that to my images. Um, this is actually shot here in New York um, on the top of a building at this cool studio. It kind of overlooks New York City. Um, so we got a whole, you know, part of a marching band involved in this whole shoot, which was really fun. And you'll see the colors that come up a lot in my work, the color yellow. All these things add to your style as a photographer. So if you have a favorite color, think about using that throughout your work because people will start to recognize that in your brand. Because photography is really and truly all about branding and you know, establishing your style. So this is a recent job for Slate Denim. I love shooting denim brands because they're always rugged and fun. And I'm really passionate about denim. Um, I'm always on the search for like the perfect pair of blue jeans. So I think that's why I love shooting denim so much. Um, so you know, this brand was really fun to work with. I'm actually going to be working with them on another denim brand they have called Rock and Roll Denim here in about a week. So they wanted me to bring to life the cool hip factor of their brand. So I brought these cool goggles with me onto set. I brought hats. Um, I brought a lot of extra accessories so the stylist could use those as part of the shoot. Um, so it really kind of added an extra dimension. So I'm shooting for a fashion brand. I not only shoot you know, the wider angle stuff, I also shoot beauty and close-ups as part of the story so that you can really communicate the vision of the brand. So you can see how these come to life. And this is actually a coffee shop. Like down the street from my house, I scouted it. I asked if we could you know, shoot there, and they were actually really cool with it. They had a lot of great textures. Um, this is actually not natural light. This is one strobe. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so it's just coming from one side. And with men, I like to light them a little bit more harsher than women. With women, I like to use mainly butterfly lighting or backlighting because it lessens pores. When you light from the side like this, it tends to bring out more texture, which makes men look more rugged. So a lot of times with men, I'm lighting them a little more ruggedly because they look good with all the kind of pores and texture and everything. Let's get into a little bit more of lighting. Um, how many of you guys are passionate about lighting? Yes, that's awesome. Um, that's one of my favorite parts of photography. As Joe McNally says, light is the language of photography. And that's really how you communicate the mood of the image. And the truth is, is there's really no right or wrong way to do lighting. It really all depends on your vision. Your vision is really what dictates what the lighting should be in a certain situation. So if you're going for sort of a happy-go-lucky mood, you might go with natural light. Natural light really fits that vision quite nicely. 
Um, if you're going for more of a moody scenario, you might use like a constant light. Um, I really love these Stella lights. They're really fun to work with. Um, they're super um, portable and they're constant. Just, I don't want to blind you guys, but they're super bright. Sorry. <laughs> and so I sometimes use these on location for stills and for video um, because it really just, they're very portable, they're quick to use, and they create this beautiful look um, where you can use a very shallow depth of field and still capture the ambiance of the location. We just spotlit the model with that constant light. Um, so it creates a nice mood. These are some Audrey Hepburn inspired images, real classic feel. I'm always inspired by the old movies and old films. Um, so it's definitely a passion of mine to see that. And, uh, you know, it's just really fun. You can see a nice reflection here from her on the, on the bar. And it was really low light here, but the beauty of our digital cameras today, especially with the D850, is great in low light. Um, it's kind of the best of everything, you know, high shutter speed, um, low light. It's a really, really great camera to use. And uh, it's fun capturing lighting. Like, I, this is a silhouette, for instance. Um, love that, kind of adds a lot of dimension to the image. And then I use a lot of direct light as well. This is just direct light, end of the day, super simple. So if the lighting is beautiful in a location, I'm not gonna overly complicate it by using strobes. Um, this is just natural light. And you notice again how that side light brings out texture. So you can see it's great if you have some awesome abs like that, it brings out the texture in his abs. <laughs> I'd love to have some abs like that, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, it just, it's really great for men, that side lighting, having the sun come from the side. Um, and then with women, this is actually backlit. So you can see how it kind of softens the texture a little bit. Um, it's really great for headshot. This was actually in Brazil. Um, it was really overcast this day. So we ended up adding a backlight, just a pro photo strobe coming from the back to get that nice hair light in the background. And this is actually before a huge rainstorm in Brazil. Literally 15 minutes after I shot this image, it was torrential downpour. And we were in the middle of these big sand dunes and had to run all the way in the sand dunes with all of our gear covered in trash bags all the way back to the car. All of us were drenched. Like my hat was like, <laughs> and then all of our gear, luckily most of the gear survived. But it was, I mean, luckily we had brought trash bags with us because I literally was looking at the model and I turned around and I couldn't see the parking lot. It was like torrential downpour. So you just never know what you're gonna get into with these photo shoots, especially in Brazil. That was a crazy experience. <laughs> um, this is also right before that rainstorm. But you can see how the, the light adds a little bit more dimension because overcast lighting can tend to be a little bit boring to me. So when you add just a nice strobe in the background or on the side, it can just add a lot more dimension. So we kind of added it. You can see the light from the side coming into his face, which is really, really quite beautiful. And sometimes with strobes, I love that sort of really contrasty type of light. This was, you used a, I used a beauty dish here. Do you guys ever use the beauty dish? Pro Photo Beauty Dish, great tool for fashion photography. I use that quite often in my work. Um, this is just one light, really simple stuff. And this is two lights, also the beauty dish, and then a hair light in the background. I will kind of overexpose the hair light to create that sort of kind of real brightness back there, which is really nice. Um, always hats, so many hats in the images. And then sometimes I will even shoot, usually I shoot a high angle because whatever is closest to your lens appears larger. Keep that in mind when you're shooting for different angles. So when I shoot from a high angle, what's closest to my lens? Any of you? Well, yeah, for at eyes, essentially. You want the eyes to really stand out. So that's usually how I'm shooting headshots, is to really make the eyes stand out. Um, but for this particular shot, I broke that rule. Again, you gotta break the rules, because I really wanted to bring out the cute gap in her teeth, because I thought that was super cool and super fashionable. So I shot from a slightly low angle to bring that out and to make that image. These are some new beauty images with the D850. Do you guys see like the pores and the eyelashes and like the detail? This is just, it's incredible to me what this camera can capture. Um, it's just blows my mind. <laughs> this was an interesting shot. Um, I was kind of wanting to create more cinematic type of lighting. So we worked together and we ended up cutting out a keyhole in a foam core and then shining a light through it. So it looks like she's almost looking through a keyhole. So it's kind of fun. Like this is just personal work. This is me just, you know, getting creative. And that's really how you, um, establish your style and come up with new cool ways to shoot. And the makeup artist worked her magic. That's some really edgy makeup. 
But that keyhole really made for an interesting shot. Um, and I think I like it cropped in better, I've decided. And the beauty of this camera is being able to crop in that much, and you still get all of that detail, which is incredible. You can see, just look at that mm. eye. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Mm. I mean, <laughs> I was looking through these, these files, and I was just like falling over myself at just how much detail was in these files. Um, and I also had an amazing retoucher, Russell Dennis, retouched these, Shadow Illusionist. He's actually based in India. So he did a really beautiful retouching job on these. Um, it's just incredible, the detail that comes out of that camera. So like I said, the D850 is going to make you want to reshoot everything you've ever shot. That is such a true statement. Um, let's talk about composition a little bit. Um, this is another image shot in Brazil. How many of you guys have actually been to Brazil? Any of you? Right? Oh, that's awesome. Isn't it beautiful? This was in um, Florianopolis. It's like a small little tiny island off the coast. And they just had some amazing locations. The biggest tricky part of shooting in Brazil was that a lot of the models didn't speak English. So there was that like language barrier because I'm used to being so communicative with whoever it is I'm shooting. And so we would have to go through a translator. So I would say to the translator, you know, have the model do this and everything is like delayed. Yeah. So <laughs> it was challenging, really challenging to have that language barrier. So I ended up doing a lot of like sign language and like showing them how to pose. And it was, it was definitely an interesting experience, um, but definitely one to, to work with. So this was a gorgeous location. It's funny, I actually scouted the location before the day of the shoot, and I didn't even see this spot when I was scouting. So we came across it the day of the shoot, so I said, we have to shoot there. We ended up having this beautiful gown. We backlit it with a strobe, because it was really overcast on this day. So there's a strobe actually behind the tree um, coming to light her hair to create that beautiful kind of haze and kind of uh, lens flare in the shot. And then I had my assistant throwing the gown up and down again. Um, this was a... <laughs> yes, <Yeah. These laughs> my stylist gets a good workout when they're on set. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's nice when you're. Is oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. on the left yes. Yeah. A little lens flare action. <laughs> yes. I love lens flare. I know that it breaks all the rules, um, but I love it. And actually, the older lenses um, yield more lens flare because they don't have the nano coating. So sometimes, purposely, I will use older lenses that were made for film to create more lens flare. Um, in the image. So when you're shooting, think about composition. You have to think about the final image and what it's going to be used for. So for instance, a brand will want to put their own typography in the negative space. So I'm always using negative space quite often in my work um, in order to leave room for the typography that they may put on there, especially for magazines. Like this would make a good horizontal spread in a magazine. Um, so, and then also for shooting like covers and stuff, you have to leave room on the top and on the sides for the text. So that's always really important. This composition is really, really nice. We had this great boat, and a, a man was standing on the side of the shore with all these boats. So I just literally, we went and asked him if we could borrow one of his boats for like 20 minutes, and we paid him 50 bucks, and he let us use this boat for this image. Again, the color yellow. Love the color yellow. And uh, that's what I love about location, is you never know who you're going to run into or what props you might be able to use. Um, so it ends up really making beautiful images. So really and truly, composition is all about controlling the viewer's eye as it goes around the photograph. Um, seeing, and usually it goes to the brightest, sharpest point of a photograph. So you really have to control the viewer's eye in that way. Um, sometimes it's really nice to use framing. This is another shot from that boat, lit the same way with the reflector. Um, so just bouncing that light back into his face, and I kind of framed him out with the steering wheel. So you can see how it really draws the viewer's eye into the subject. That's really what composition is all about, just controlling the viewer's eye. So let's talk a little bit about hair and makeup. <clears throat> hair and makeup is really important in fashion photography. And I always, even when I was shooting portraits, I would always have um, the portrait, whoever I was shooting, go to like a makeup counter and get their makeup done beforehand. Because um, it really saved me a lot of time in retouching. So with fashion, obviously we have hair and makeup artists on set. I usually like natural hair and makeup. That tends to be my favorite. So I end up using natural hair and makeup a lot in my work. Some people like the more avant-garde, crazy makeup, which is awesome. It's just really not my style. So you just really have to stay true to yourself and what you personally love um, and go with that, unless the, the client is dictating that, which sometimes is the case. So this was for a hair campaign for macadamia oil. Really fun shoot um, and really great models. When you're shooting two models together, sometimes it's really nice that they have a similar face shape so that there is a better translation in the image and it brings more emphasis to the hair.
So let's talk a little bit more about wardrobe. Wardrobe is an interesting aspect of fashion photography. Do you guys ever have wardrobe stylists on set? You do, obviously, on your videos. Any, any of you else? It's really, really great to work with a wardrobe stylist if that's possible. When I was first starting out, I didn't have a wardrobe stylist. It was just me and the model, so I was doing all of that myself, which is really challenging. Um, so with shooting model portfolios, the agency is usually like very simple wardrobe because it's all about marketing the model. So when you go to shoot a new face, it's really important to keep the wardrobe very simple. So maybe have them jeans and a t-shirt, just kind of edgy Calvin Klein style, because it really showcases the model as opposed to the wardrobe. So you have to consider what it is you're actually selling in the photographs that you're taking. Now, if you're shooting for the fashion designer, you obviously want the dress to stand out even more than the model. But for shooting models and port model portfolios, you want the model to stand out more than the wardrobe if that makes sense. So it's always really important. Because when I was first starting out, I was putting like hats on the models for model portfolios and all this fancy fashion. And the agencies would come back and they're like, we're marketing our models. We can't have this all this extra stuff going on for their comp cards. So think about that when you're going into it. Um, now I work with a, a wardrobe stylist on almost every job. So I will send them my vision board before the shoot so that they can kind of see like what kind of wardrobe I'm looking to pull for the fashion shoot. And then a lot of times we'll do a fitting the day before the shoot so that people know that the clothes is gonna fit on the day of the shoot. It's always really important because um, sometimes models, sizes change and things like that fit them differently. I've had that happen before where none of the clothes fit the model. So it's always really good to do a fitting beforehand if you can. Um, and sometimes wardrobe can be very simple. I tend to go mostly pretty simple with wardrobe unless the client's wanting something super fancy. Um, you can always see a little element of my style in the wardrobe. I always bring a little extra props like hats. For instance, this was a campaign for the Transportation Authority. So we had to make riding the bus look cool and fun. <laughs> it's interesting being a commercial photographer, what kind of things you end up photographing. But this is actually a really fun shoot. It's a three-day shoot um, for the, you know, the Transportation Authority. This is actually in Texas. Texas. Yep, in Texas. So we had two. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So so we had a, a couple of models and they actually, the story was I had them go on a bus date. I don't know if y'all have ever been on a bus date, but they rode around town, they went to the museum and we filmed the video and I directed the video. And then I also shot the stills for all their advertising and websites. So we kind of just created real nice lifestyle images. You can see they look kind of hipster. That's definitely my style. It makes the bus look fun and more interesting. So a lot of that is the wardrobe that really has come to life. And I kind of art directed that. And you know the lateral light looks really nice. We also added um, a video shining, uh, video light shining towards camera to make it look like it has some nice lens flare just for the texture. Do you gel your lights? What do you say? Do you gel your lights? Sometimes I do gel my lights. Okay. Yeah. So I think on this one we did put a warming gel on it to give it that glowy, warm kind of look. So yeah, very good question. So let's talk a little bit about color real quick. Um, color in photography is incredibly important. Keep in mind that I did not um, go to school for photography. I went to school for business. So I've actually had to learn all these things after college. So I studied color quite a lot in the past few years. And I've realized that there are certain images that really stand out to me. And a lot of it is because of color contrast. Um, red is a very powerful color. So if you want to use red, you got to really be considerate that you want it to be the main focus of the image. You don't want to have red in the background usually because it's going to really detract your eye from the focal point. So red is that color of power. Um, this image frames the subject in red, so it ends up being a really powerful image. But red is that color of passion. You know, each color has a different mood associated with it. The color pink, it's really soft and muted. This is a little more ethereal. So you might think of using that for bridal photography or different soft portraits that you're looking to do. Um, I love that. And this is also another image that I use Vaseline at the bottom of the filter. Um, to create that look where she's floating. She's kind of floating in the background. So it's kind of fun. Yes, you can do that in Photoshop, obviously. I just like to do it in camera. Um, and also putting things in front of the lens is really fun. So this is the color wheel. And you can see what each color kind of represents. Like yellow is really happy. You know, green has a peacefulness associated with it. So consider what you're shooting. So for instance, if you're shooting a yoga ad, or something like that, you might think about using green or blue because they're just really soft kinds of colors that are really calming. Um, so they're going to add that to your work. And it's going to really kind of help your um, whoever's viewing your image immediately associate calming things with that ad. 
So that's all about perception and how to communicate your vision. And then another thing before I move on, this is an interesting um, thing that I've learned, is if you use colors that are across from each other on the color wheel, for instance, purple and yellow, you know, orange and blue, if you use these color combinations within the same image, it's gonna have such a color contrast that your image is gonna look three-dimensional. So think about using these color combinations. So if you're shooting a portrait in a forest that's all green, think about putting your subject in color red, because they're gonna really bounce off of that background. Um, so I'm always thinking about these things. Purple and yellow is a really nice combination, um, and it just really adds a lot to your work. Again, blue and orange. What'd you say? Where did I get it? Any art yeah, the art stores or have it. <laughs> or on Google image search. <laughs> it works too, absolutely. So you can see orange and blue here. This is all strategic. I told the stylist to pull a yellow dress and the guy to have a blue shirt on because I knew it would have a nice color contrast. Um, so all of these, these elements are real strategic. And uh, that's another fun image. Same color contrast. Red and green, really nice color combination. And then, again, more dogs as props. <laughs> and then this is all yellow with the blue book. So that's also a really nice color combination. So you can see how these really work in the images and kind of bring that vibrancy and that three-dimensional nature to the image. So definitely think about using those colors. Love bright colors. I kind of go either way, either real monochrome, black and white, or super colorful. There's really no, no big in between. So let's talk a little bit more about movement. Um, movement's really nice, especially in fashion photography, and it's actually really easy to create. Um, you can blur your image. You know, you can slow down your shutter speed to create some movement blur. Um, but there's also an even simpler way. Um, this is obviously motion blur with um, having your assistant hold the bottom of the dress and throw it in the air. That creates movement. But also it can be as simple as using a hair fan. Do you guys ever use hair fans for portraits? So this is the cheapest hair fan you will ever find and the most portable. <laughs> um, this is called a Makita. You can get these from the hardware store. And they're really great to use on set. You don't want to use the ones that are super powerful because you'll just blow the model to smith smithereens. Uh, this one is the perfect power because it's not too much. It's just the slight little wind in the hair. So we bring one of these to every single shoot that I do. And you'll see my hairstylist, she'll have the fan almost like, you know, just, you know, fanning the model to get that hair blowing. So I use the Makita a lot. It's definitely my favorite hair fan. Um, we have used the fancy ones in studio. They're just so big and they have to be plugged in that it's kind of hard to, to work with. So this has worked really well for me. So you get this kind of nice, sort of wind in the hair that creates movement in your image. So if you're, it's great for portraits. If you guys are shooting portraits and things like that, really fun. This was an image that breaks all the rules of photography. You never usually want all these crazy blown out points, but in fashion photography, there are no rules. So learn the rules and then learn how to break them and create really unique images. That's really how you create beautiful, authentic imagery. So I actually used a star filter for this shot to create the crazy, crazy lens flare. So, and then you can also put crystals in front of the lens. This is also great for video. When I'm doing video shoots, you can put kind of dangle crystals in front of the lens to create some nice bokeh in the foreground. There's your bokeh crystals. word. What do you say? Light crystals. Oh, no, um, I call them crystals. Did I say lens crystals, maybe? Uh, no, I'm asking what kind of crystals. Oh, what kind of crystals? crystals? They're literally just little glass crystals. You can get them at like Hobby Lobby. You can get them off a chandelier. Um, you kind of dangle them in front of the lens, um, especially with video. If you shine a light on it from the back towards the lens, it creates a nice little, little bokeh in the foreground. So I use these a lot in stills and in video. How close so, to the lens do you good question. <laughs> yes, you'll want to use a longer lens. So you'll want to use like maybe a 105 millimeter, and you'll want it very close to your lens usually to create this kind of look. They're, these are right up against my lens. They're literally taped to my lens. Um, so they're very close. And sometimes I'll have an assistant maybe kind of dangle it in front um, just to kind of play with it. Um, so usually you want them very close to the lens. And you can't really use a wide angle lens with the crystals. It has to be a longer lens like the 105. So it's really fun to work with in fashion. You can see it barely comes up on this image, but you can see the crystals. So the less you shine a light on them, the less they'll show up. So you really have to shine a light up on them from the back. You can do that with strobes or with constant light. So, and then this one, you can see the crystals are a little further away from the lens. So I had them maybe a few feet in front of me. So they get smaller. 
So it depends really on how big you want the crystals to show up as, um, but usually I have them pretty close. So either right up against the lens or just maybe three feet forward. And they're really nice for bridal photography, create a really nice ambiance and beautiful look. So then I just kind of want to end on personal projects. Do you guys do a lot of personal projects? Yay, good. That's really the name of the game in photography. That's really how you communicate your vision and show people what it is that you want to shoot. Um, I had the interesting experience and really honor to photograph iconic swimsuit model Kathy Ireland. She is a supermodel. She's, in thir she's been in 13 consecutive Sports Illustrated magazines. Um, so she's a supermodel now turned super mogul. And I was able to photograph her because I was actually introduced to her at a dinner at her house. It was a charity dinner that my mentor invited me to. So I got to go to her house, have dinner, and I really got along with her really well. She's so humble. She's one of those people that has a great energy and a great soul about them. So we really hit it off, and she's really great at mentoring young women. And so I pitched her this idea. I just decided to pitch her this idea. How would we do a cool shoot in LA, recreate some beautiful images, some portraits of you, and then also recreate some images um, that Bert Stern shot of Marilyn Monroe um, back in the day. And so she actually signed on and said, yeah, I'll spend, I'll spend two days with you in LA and do this whole shoot. So it was kind of, I was kind of flabbergasted that she said yes, that she would do it. And so we did this whole portrait shoot. We shot in Venice Beach, capture her whole essence. And the biggest thing about it was she hadn't been photographed in 20 years. She had pretty much gotten out of being photographed. And she like said that she would do it um, on this one case. She really enjoyed it. So she's pretty much all business now. She has an amazing company. She has 21,000 um, items in the market that are licensed. She's a brand ambassador for. Can you believe that? 21,000. She's been on the cover of Forbes magazine. She has this amazing business. Um, so it's pretty inspiring that she's gone from being Sports Illustrated swimsuit model to now today the super mogul that she is. So, you know, we shot on the beach, really natural type of images. I pitched Nikon and it was their 100th anniversary. So I called up the marketing director and pitched them on doing um, a part of the shoot and kind of recreating those Burt Stern images with Kathy. And so we ended up using the Nikon DF camera, which is the modern day version of the Nikon F, um, to create those images. And these kind of have that whole black and white, beautiful Burt Stern feel. Um, so it was a really fun shoot. Kathy was so, so much fun to work with. And uh, so we ended up displaying these last week at a gallery opening. Have you guys ever been in a gallery before? Awesome. It was a very surreal experience to, for me because I've actually never done a big gallery show. So I guess about a week ago, this past Saturday, um, we unveiled all of these images at the gallery and then we had all the proceeds from the auction items go to um, Kathy's Foundation, the Providence School. And we actually sold out, which was amazing. And we had a really great event, such a fun time. Um, I worked with an amazing graphic designer on all of these um, Warhols. We created the fun sort of Warhol style image um, on some of them. And it was just a really incredible day. So this is a book that I spent about a year writing. Um, and it just actually came out, be released, um, I believe, November 7th. But uh, I just wrote this entire fashion book of all the things that I've learned in the past 10 years about fashion photography. So it goes into the detail on how to create a career in fashion and commercial photography. So um, I think I'll be signing books after this event, which is really surreal to me. It's crazy to have a book out there, believe it or not. So uh, it's been quite a fun experience. All right, guys. Well, y'all have been just amazing. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it.